Last Cambridge Work Club video was pretty popular, but I don't think I explained things well or even showed you the true volume, so I decided to do it again. And since now I'm packing for my Easter holiday, yeah, did you think it was actually that tidy all the time? No. Everything is packed in boxes. I was going through the supervision work that I've been doing over this term, and let me show you what it was like. But first, a bit of maths. I'm doing computer science at Cambridge, as I'm sure all of you know. My course in first year was divided into four quarters, like this. By the way, this division will completely disappear by 2020. The course will be 75% computer science and 25% maths. So anyway, this is what a typical week would be like in my first year. A bit of everything, as you can see, and around 20 contact hours of lectures plus practicals. Then, of course, there would always be three or four supervisions per week. Now, second year was a bit different, it was all computer science. 15 hours of lectures and two practicals per week. One was two hours, another one was four or five hours. In terms of workload, this is the amount of notes that we had this year and bear in mind this is not everything because I brought a lot to Russia. That's a big chunk and I think sometimes it's a waste of paper because all of it is online as well. Just to give you an idea, sometimes you just kind of write things on the side or you like highlight, pretending that you will remember it later on. And this is also the amount of uh, supervision work that we did this year. Also pretty thick, I'd say. This year I decided not to write everything down. I was typing out a lot of things. In third year, they finally let us be adults and let us choose the courses that we want. Bear in mind, the final grade will be 75% from courses and 25% from dissertation. And of course, there is no way you should or could go to all of the courses. All the lectures are always in the morning and then you might or might not have supervisions in the afternoon, plus all the societies and stuff like that in the evening. So that's what my current year is like. I had to be pretty strategic about which courses I was taking because it is all about the exams in the end and the question distribution per paper is pretty weird, but I'll talk about it next time. So the supervisions that I'm going to show you were from the courses that I actually took. While there were definitely lectures that I was going to but didn't take the supervisions because I thought that would be too much, there are courses that I took supervision in but didn't go to the lectures because the lectures are sometimes pretty rubbish. So. In my third year, I'm getting quite a lot of freedom. Also, sometimes supervisors ask for a scanned work, but they don't print it out. They don't check it at all, which is pretty annoying. But the point is, I don't have it on me, so I cannot show you. The sheer volume of things is just huge. This is some stuff that I accumulated over the years, and it's just like... Have you ever looked back on your A-level notes? Probably, but most likely not. And all of this is just like nostalgia and it's hard to let go, but truly, when will I ever look at this again? I just need to put it in the bin and forget about it. And all these terrible marks, so, yeah. I remember watching Jake Wright's video when I was still in my sixth form thinking, Ah, oh, he's just complaining so much about the volume, just come on, get through the notes. Because sometimes, sometimes, right, the courses are actually saying to you, not the courses, the lecturers, are saying, I will never examine you on something that's not in the notes. Which makes you think, okay, I will just simply memorize everything that's on, in the notes. And that is impossible. That is truly impossible and I tried, my visual memory is good, but it's not that good because there can be one line and if you didn't make any notes during the lecture on this line, there is no way you're gonna get a 20 mark question correct in the exam. It's time for an Easter break and of course I now need to decide what kind of things I'm taking back to Russia forever since I'll be graduating. I look at the things and you see this is from first year physics, these are all this, not all of course not all, but some of the supervision work that I've done over the years and you start questioning like will I ever need this again? One of the problems of traveling is of course I'm traveling by plane, I just don't have space for this. Another decision that I need to make is whether to take notes with me. Now notes are sometimes more important, like for example this is bioinformatics, this is how thick it was. I personally think that's a waste of paper. Sometimes you do end up annotating like, yeah, whatever that meant, or highlighting, but in the end I still end up revising with just PDFs online because I can just not take, simply because I don't take that back to Russia. So yeah, that all probably goes to recycling. This, for example, was more useful. I was definitely annotating much more, so I am considering taking it. But basically, I'm very jealous of people who annotate electronically on their tablets and then they have it all saved on their computers forever 
and anytime they can look it up. Whereas I will probably use this for exam revision for sure. But then, yeah, as soon as I graduate, I'm gonna say goodbye to this. One of the stupid things that sometimes lecturers do is printing all the lectures, lecture notes separately, which means I have now a lot of these very thin lecture notes. Not useful, I probably did not annotate anything. I probably even took two of the same thing. Oh, that's dumb. Sometimes some highlighting because it probably made me think that I was working during the lecture. Sometimes it would be something like this or some diagrams which would be hard to kind of write down in a Word document. So I might just take pictures of this and upload to cloud. Almost done. Um, looking at this now and thinking, so this is what I had in my first year. It's basically MATLAB summarized in this book. And they need to realize that Komsky scan Google. It's fine. And I just, sometimes I give things a chance. I'm like, well, maybe at some point I'll use it. And so for three years of my degree, I haven't used this once. And I was thinking to myself, am I even using MATLAB? And guess what? I am. I am using it for my dissertation. It's good. It's useful. But I would never contact the book, you know? There are always online forums. Why would anyone need the book? And so I just feel a bit sad because you see, like, they have amazing graphs here and all these explanations. This one is very hard to decide for me. This was machine learning and Bayesian inference this year. The only lecturer who actually went on a strike and we missed around five or six lectures. And if you look at it, sometimes just highlighting, just pretending to be working. Sometimes nothing, nothing for pages and pages, because like, if you look, it's such hard maths. Don't get me wrong, I love maths. I'm good at maths. But this, this is out of nothing. And I actually mean out of nothing. The lecturer said, I have no idea how these guys came up with this. But it's marvelous and it's amazing and somehow it works. Like a lot of things in machine learning. So just learn it. Just learn it. As a comparison, we can look at computer vision, for example. This is actually a printed supervision with no comments whatsoever. Very helpful, right? Here we have NLP with some ticks for correction. This is what I've been writing during the supervision. And in red, these are the comments and feedback, which is super helpful. So supervisors are really different. And on this note, I conclude by this video, I've talked about health and exercise and extracurriculums, society things and studying. So if you have any questions, please ask in the comments down below. Tell me what you want to see more, the everyday Cambridge vlog stuff or some more deep thinking about my university degree. I'll see you in my next video. Bye.